This is the LMC Explorer motorhome. Uh, LMC has, I would say, uh, positioned itself as a um, luxurious type or near luxurious type of uh, motorhome that's not quite uh, a liner. Well, it's not really to be defined anyway, word liner. Nisman Bishop Small was declared by Nisman Bishop to be a liner. Um, so, uh, this van here starts around 75,000 euros. This one here is in excess of 90,000. It's got 15,000 plus of uh, extras options added onto it. 752 centimeters long, 232 uh, wide, 296 high, empty weight 2,959, giving over 500 um, kilos of uh, extra uh, payload. Um, if it's on a three and a half ton basis, although you can put on a 4,400 ton basis, which would give 900 kilos. Now, I just want to explain one thing here. This is empty weight here, there, and the uh, driving weight, which is when they allow for a person plus a uh, bit of fuel and a bit of water. You see they've actually allowed quite a lot there uh, for those two. So 100, 134 plus 41 is 175 of allowed. So it really is a, a fair bit of fuel and a fair bit of water. Okay, it's got a big garage here at the back. Doors of equal size on both e at both ends. Huge amount of stuff you could get in there. And uh, let's go inside. Actually, it's nice to have a relative amount of peace because uh, I'm trying to film this during the day when people are here, particularly now it's a Friday. I mean, there's stacks of people coming on Friday. And tomorrow it's going to be even greater the amount of people. Uh, well, here because it's Saturday they're coming to make the decisions at Sunday buying or maybe they decided last weekend but it's now the time for people to uh, put the money down and buy things okay uh, bed above the um, the living area the driving area to the cockpit you could have that taken out and have a um, lockers put in I mean, this at this level nearly all camper van manufacturers will build to requirements based on a general pattern which they will give you indeed one or two have said to me that really they want to just sell the base unit as is uh, because they can produce things far quicker doing that it's the extras which uh, cause them the problems with uh, time so anyway, if this were mine, as you'll know, I'd have had I'd put lockers all the way through, all the way around. Let's have a look in here. One feature I have noted is that uh, lockers are getting bigger, deeper, as are drawers, chunkier if you want in a way, more space. And this here, you see, there's often the dividers in, and the dividers are either so low or so high you can't use the space above or below it. Or, uh, but in this case, there isn't a divider. And that's the way, certainly, I would uh, do it as well. Keep the dividers out, unless, of course, you know, it's something where um, a deep storage, um, such as like in the, the bottom of a wardrobe or something, I can understand that. I'll show you these as well here. That's where you get your, your gas. Here, obviously, it's below the sink. Now, yeah, a, a deep drawer, or maybe it's not as deep as some of them. The problem here is though, these things, I found this out myself the hard way. Put these things in and you're better off having uh, proper sides all the way around. Because things fall out. There you go, particularly in the kitchen, you get things like spice packets and they'll fall out the back. Okay, let's come up to the kitchen. This is all pretty standard, really. Big sink, Thetford, three burners, which are divided. I think the division's a good idea. Somebody wrote yesterday in a comment 
uh, why why do all burners look as though they or hobs look as though they've been installed as a last resort? I'm not quite certain if I follow the idea for that. Um, I can't think of uh, how companies like Thetford, who do all of them, could be more original in what they are doing. One thing I want to point out again is that if you get this thing here, a rim like that, it will deflect heat because these things here can melt. If made of plastic, they all open the door up here. Okay, so I'm doing the kitchen currently. You see, it's got on these Thetford fridges. Sorry, it's not a Thetford, it's a Dometic fridge. Sorry, sorry, take it back. Sorry, Dometic fridge. And up here, more storage. Right, let's come near shower. There we go. Also pretty deep, as I mentioned. Let's also pull this thing here out, which is blocked. At present. I think there's a sort of cult following to LMC as a um, manufacturer. It's been on the go for a very long time. Um, it's been part of the Erwin Heimer Group, Erwin Heimer Group, for um, what, um, 10, 12 years, something like that, I can't quite remember now. Um, Germany pronounced the Y as a U, as I've said in various um, films in the past, so its name is Heimer. Um, things even Germans now are saying Heimer. Well, I suppose they have to really because of the uh, um, English being the sort of international language, so to speak. Oh, that's comfortable. But I could definitely do without that bed if it were mine above me. You know, the, sometimes you get sort of weak driver's chairs, but I really like it strong good driver's chair which supports the back and, and the head all the way up and it's comfortable to sit in as you uh, sitting at the table or something like that. I really like this and this, this is my favorite position as I can say and um, sometimes I can get my feet up on the chair in front or indeed the chair to my left the one which I can't understand the point of except to take the shoes off as you come into the van. These chairs are pretty, pretty expensive. I mean, if you're doing your own van, you, you're looking at getting up for 2,000 euros or something like that. Obviously, the Heimer Group won't be paying that type of money for them because they're buying in bulk. But all the same. My own van has still got the uh, Fiat chairs in them, which. Hmm, not all that good, 